Thank you for joining today's event. Please stand by for about one minute as we let people join the room and get situated. We hope you enjoy today's presentation. Hi everyone, I uh, hope you are doing well and are staying safe. So welcome to the first MicroMasters Open Access Live event of 2021. So this is a cross-course collaboration event. Uh, we have students from SE0X, SE2X, and SE4X, so which are the courses of our MicroMasters program currently running right now. And of course, this event is also open to all other supply chain enthusiasts anywhere in the world. So I'm Sindhu, I'm currently running SE0X course. And I have uh, Laura with me, SE2X course lead, uh, who will be co-hosting this event today. Thank you, Sindhu. And hi, everyone. Welcome. And thank you for joining us today. Yeah. So uh, today we've invited Lieben Huang uh, to chat with us on uh, optimizing supply chains uh, to meet stakeholders' needs. So just a little intro about Lieben. Um, so she has an undergraduate degree in medicine and holds a master's degree in strategy uh, management and product development in bio industry. So she recently graduated from MIT's Supply Chain Management Blended Masters program, which makes Laura, Lieben, and me ex classmates. So uh, Lieben has worked across multiple industries, uh, first as an entrepreneur and later as a supply chain professional. Um, so currently she is serving as the director of uh, operation strategy at Abbott Diagnostics. Uh, thank you, Lieben, for taking the time out to join us uh, for this live event. Great. Well, thanks for having me. Um, it's great to see you both again. Um, I have to say the MIT Supply Chain Blended Master's program is truly an amazing experience, and I am grateful to meeting all the like-minded supply chain prof professionals like both of you um, around the world. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to share my personal experience here with all the Michael Master learners. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's great, Living. We're so happy to have you here with us today. So for all that are joining today, today's topic is often raised by our learners in discussion forums in our courses. We get questions like, how do we apply certain models or techniques that are taught in courses? How much of the outcome from models and algorithms are we supposed to implement? Or maybe, how do we consider external factors that cannot be modeled into account? So while we may not be able to touch on all of these topics, we felt that drawing on Levin's insight here would help address the topic of putting theories into action. During the conversation, we will answer a few questions we received in advance from learners. For those that are joining live or not currently enrolled in the course, please let us know your questions in the Q&A tab. Also, if you are taking a course, you can jump in with your question in the Q&A tab but please rename yourself, write in your name and the course name you are participating in so we know who you are. Probably something like this. Yeah. So uh, Lieben, before we you know, jump to the topic of our discussion, uh, help us uh, set some context about your experience. So how does a person who has, who has studied medicine end up on the path of supply chain management? What caught your interest in this field? Great, sure. Um, so I have to say that I learned from my career that uh, supply chain is the backbone of any business. Um, no matter what industry or job functions that you're in, you will interact with supply chain at some point. Um, so as Sindhu introduced earlier, after I graduated from medical school in China, I continued my study in a business management master's program. And subsequently, I started my own business uh, as an independent consultant helping Western companies to do business in China. Um, this experience really opened my eyes on the complexity and opportunity of global trade. Um, so later on, I joined a leading product realization and contract manufacturing company with uh, over hundred manufacturing sites around the world. Um, in that company, I had um, various different roles from business management, strategic planning to uh, mergers and acquisitions. Supply chain management is the core competency of a contract manufacturing company. I learned so much from this career experience and deeply appreciated that how an 
agile, transparent, and scalable supply chain can be an important competitive advantage to help create value for our customers. So currently, I'm a director of operations strategy for a healthcare product company, where my responsibilities are developing and implementing strategies to drive network optimization, to enable reliable supply of health, health products that our customers depend upon. Um, I started my Michael Masters journey in 2017. Working alongside supply chain professionals, I wanted to really get more knowledge in supply chain fundamentals so, so I can better make connections with them and, and, and help them to develop uh, initiatives. So I was uh, working full time and, and I needed something really flexible and online. So I came across the Michael Masters program I took SCX Zero first and with the intention to try it out, I was so impressed with the quality and I decided to complete it, to complete all the five courses and pursue the Michael Masters certificate. So like Sindhu mentioned, um, we went through the, uh, 20, uh, the master's degree program together in 2020. So yeah, this is my background. That's great, that's impressive living and thank you for sharing that. Um, the journey of yours actually answers also some questions that are brought from our learners, like how am I supposed to be in supply chain or excel in supply chain if I'm a finance manager or a food engineer or an IT professional? And I have to say myself that I started in finance and cost controlling, so I totally see their point. But as you said, and as we always share together, supply chains are applicable in every industry, touch every aspect of doing business. And it's just about being curious enough to figure out the problem statement and acquire the skills to solve it, just as you explained you did. So now getting on the topic of the day, let's go to stakeholders. Stakeholders have many, many interests that needs to be addressed while designing as any supply chain, like for example, minimizing cost, providing a better service level and so on. What were some of the big concepts that you applied in your work that help in optimizing supply chains? Would you tell us any big takeaways that you want to share? Sure. Um, I would say I learned a lot from each of the Michael Masters courses. And I have used many of the concepts in my work, um, especially the concepts from XCX0 supply chain analytics and XCX1 uh, supply chain fundamentals. So those two, two courses for me out of foundations help me better understand the mathematical basics for optimization, simulation, and trade-off considerations for supply chain policies. Um, early in my career, uh, when I was in business development role, uh, we help our customer to uh, reduce their overall supply chain costs by optimizing the total landed cost, which means the overall cost from builder material sourcing to the delivery of final products including the manufacturing, transportation, customs, uh, in transit inventory handling and carrying costs. One of the tools behind this approach is the mixed integer linear programming that we will all learn about in XCX0. So this is just one example um, of the, uh, the mixed integer linear programming application. It's a very useful tool that uh, you can use to help improve all areas of supply chain from day-to-day -day operations such as resource planning, production planning to network design. Um, the XCX2 courses uh, provided deeper understanding on supply chain network, uh, network design. And um, that builds on, builds up on the mathemat mathematical basics from uh, XCX0. So in my current role, one of the key responsibility is to uh, optimize our network um, I have used models from simple Excel model, like the ones that you will all learn from the course, or to a more complex model using software or Python programming. Um, however, for me, uh, the key for any network optimization project is not building the model, is understanding the problem itself. So uh, typically I have a few steps I always take for network optimization projects. Um, so the first step, I would try to understand what is the real problem we're trying to solve. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. Um, my recommendation is don't always assume. For example, sometimes you may initially think it's an inventory problem, but after deep dive, you realize it's an order pattern problem. 
So to understand what problem we're trying to solve, um, I would first map the current processes step by step, um, talk with process owners, gather data along the way, uh, supporting each of the steps, understand how things are working and why they're working this way. So after understanding the real problems to solve, um, you can still building the models for different scenarios and pulling stakeholders to discuss trade-offs. Um, in this step, it's important to identify the key drivers for the decision and how the variability of those drivers can impact the outcome, not only the quantitative drivers like cash flow, cost saving, lead time saving, but also the qualitative factors that are important to your business. Um, it's important to understand how the new design will support the business objectives. For example, um, as a consumer electronic company, time to market probably one of your top consideration, but for healthcare product company, compliance and quality are pri top priorities. Um, lastly, I would like to borrow Chris Kaplan's mantra that you will hear many times throughout the XCX course, models don't make decisions, people do. Back to you. Nice, thank you, Levin. That that really explains. I mean, we really like the way you explain that. It's not important uh, to you know right away collect data and build the models and start finding solutions, but rather understand the problem statement. Uh, you know, go understand what are the constraints that are going into ideating different scenarios, and then use you know the underlying techniques and then build the models and run them. So that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. So related to our discussion right now, um, there are a lot of questions from learners um, which we received around COVID-19, of course. Yeah. So uh, when such unexpected scenarios arise, where our supply chain networks are stressed, right? So what would your recommendation be for a turnaround? So when such, uh, how do we deal with such external factors that we probably wouldn't have taken into account when we are you know, making our models or creating our structures? Sure. Um, yeah, COVID, it's uh, such an impactful event that touched everybody's life and every company's uh, you know, operations. Um, from my opinion, I would say uh, the pandemic further accentuated the importance of robust closed loop risk management and business continuity planning. Because no model can accurately predict when and what risk will take place, uh, any business should have a plan to respond to unwanted disruptions. Have a deep understanding of all aspects of your supply chain, identifying the risks and vulnerabilities and how they may impact your business and develop risk mitigations plan around these variables. The risk factors are also dynamic, um, so we need to have a process to monitor and update trigger points. This include updating the set models and structures for mitigations with lessons learned from the unexpected scenarios like today, uh, the pand pandemic. Um, so the risk management plan also does not exist in the vacuum. Uh, we need to evaluate and communicate with the supply chain internal and external stakeholders frequently. So when the unexpected happens, all parties are on the same page and move towards the same direction. That's great, Livy, and thanks for sharing. And I think this is also another tool that could be helpful and I would love to address here. So building upon the network design concept and this communication you talk about, according to your experience in the general field of supply chain from all your years of experience, what is the importance being placed on end-to-end -end visibility? Yeah, it's a very interesting uh, topic. So I think supply chain visibility has become more and more important to companies as the supply chain become more and more complex. Uh, for example, if a manufacturer needs to recall product, it's important to have a visibility on where the product inventory is across the distribution channels and the customers whom they sold this product to so they can inform the parties impacted and retrieve the products in a very timely basis. Uh, and also another example, uh, if an unexpected shortage of a component, which is only less than 0.1% of the product cost, that can shut down the whole manufacturing line due to lack of a supply chain visibility. So the shortage could be caused by many reasons, a supplier quality issue, loss or delay freight, regulatory issue, but without a visibility, we cannot mitigate it. Uh, connecting to the pandemic question that we just discussed, um, if a company have end-to-end -end visibility of their supply chain, 
it will be able to see the abnormal supply or demand behaviors from the suppliers and customers in the early stage of the pandemic and able to develop proactive mitigation plans to prevent unwanted disruptions of the operations. So um, in my view, end-to-end uh, -end visibility is the foundation that enables a company to be proactive and efficient. Um, enabling the visibility uh, often involves connecting data that are in different format, different refreshing cadence, and from different silo systems to generate actionable insights. I believe as professional, uh, supply chain professionals, we all desire to have this end-to-end uh, -end visibility of our supply chain. However, however, many times this could mean uh, significant investments, in which case it's important to lay out and align the future vision with the organization's leadership and prioritize the initiative based on the benefits versus efforts, taking incremental wins to demonstrate the value of achieving the final goal. That's very true, Living, and I would like to move on to the digital transformation line now that you talked about this uh, trade-offs between the technologies that we might need and that we would love to have and the cost that we can afford and the technology that is available wherever we're working. So uh, we have a related question from Manish. So he's saying that the modern tools such as machine learning and artificial intelligence and has to question why if they are we think replacing human managers somehow, and also if we um, supply chain manager have to learn the new tools to keep up with the modern times. Um, I would say yes. <laughs> um, I believe data analytics and data science science skills are more important now than ever. Uh, like you mentioned, right? Digital transformation, Industry 4.0. Those are hot topics and nowadays that you can see everywhere from um, uh, industry literatures or you know um, in or discussions in the industry uh, summits. So many companies are going through different stages of these transformations. More and more data will come from supply chain. Uh, as supply chain professionals, we need to have the skills to understand and leverage the information. I think it's very important to understand the basics and theories behind the different data analytic tools, but I don't believe we have to be the expert in programming. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> so um, if your company already implemented ML or AI, the data, science, the data science knowledge will help you better understand the model and ask the right questions to evaluate and improve the ML models. Um, and if your company is still developing the data strategy, the data science knowledge will help you bring on the right tools, right skill sets for your team. Interestingly, um, about the, the question of uh, AI replacing supply chain professionals, um, in the capstone project of the SCM program, um, my partner and I studied human machine teaming in AI-driven supply chains. Um, among the successful AI implementation projects that we studied, one common theme is that AI are not replacing supply chain professionals, but are becoming more of a human's teammate to augment human's capability in better decision making. So. I, that's very well said, Levin. Yes, and I, I don't think we we would agree that you are not a programmer because we've seen your skills in our classes during our master's program. But uh, thanks for the comment saying that human managers are not necessarily, you know, they will not be replaced by the program, but then there's something that would go hand in hand to, you know, yep. be better. So um, thank you for the discussion so far. I think we've quickly progressed uh, through the live event and um, it's nice how our discussion so far has touched almost, you know, all of the SES courses that are currently running right now. So just a quick thing uh, for the professionals who are um, not enrolled in any of our courses. So we have about uh, five um, courses as a part of our MicroMasters program, which ends uh, with a uh, comprehensive final exam. So upon completion of this, you receive an official certificate in MicroMasters in SEM. So if you need more details, you can always visit our program page. And also there, there is this other live event we did where uh, Dr. Ponce, our executive director, spoke about the details of the program and also the value that it brings. So we will send you these details in the follow-up email as well as it will also be available in our platform as well for you to check it out. Over to Thank you. Laura. Thank you, Cindy. So now we will get some questions from the crowd and the questions we received in advance. 
Remember to rename yourself mentioning your course number if you're enrolling to one. I would like to start with this question from Steph Living, and this is totally for you. How has the micro master course enriched the traditional master education you received? Um, I would say it's uh, the micro master course is very supply chain specific and give a lot of great information on supply chain fundamentals. Um, so the traditional, so I did have a um, business management master's before, uh, before taking the micro master's program. So the business management master's program gave me a great perspective, of all the different tools that I need from a business management standpoint, uh, strategy development, product design, uh, and quality uh, management and all the general uh, concepts that I need to get into. However, uh, it's not deep, in, deep, in, deep enough to, uh, for the supply chain fundamental concepts. So the Michael Masters program really give a great um, introduction and great education on the fundamentals that you will need to use or leverage uh, in supply chain. So I think this is totally related to that. So I will just jump in with the second one we have got. Um, our learners are asking, especially Sandeep, um, how did your viewpoint toward SCM problems change before and after getting this specific technical skills you got through our course? Was there any change in the point of view and how you jumped in in maybe your board meetings? Uh, how, how does it change your SCM view? Um, so I would say it uh, helps me better understand uh, why things are why things happen this way and how things are operated. Uh, for example, you know, uh, understanding how inventory policies are setting and what kind of different approach that we use uh, in inventory policy setting. And, uh, and also have a broader perspective, understanding how one decision from uh, one value chain step of the supply chain could impact uh, the entire uh, entire supply chain or entire value chain through the bull whip e effect. So that you will, you will also learn how in the SCX course. So uh, yes, I think the, X, uh, the Michael Master course uh, give me better understanding on the details on, of the supply chain and broaden my perspective. And when I uh, speak to supply chain professionals and when I work with them, that help, uh, help me to uh, speak the same language, if you will, with them, and um, and and yeah. So that helps to better uh, drive the final outcomes that we desire. Great living. And now I will give you some seconds to rest, and I will jump into Sindhu. Um, I also know Sindhu has been taking the micro master in the past before going to the blended master program, and she did it when she was working and had her own uh, hobbies going on. Um, a lot of people is wondering, how do you handle the courses, your day-to-day -day life, a, a full-time job, and the application to a residential or blender master program? How was your journey? I think this is one of the famous questions that we always get. How do you manage it, right? So for me, when I was working, so I was a full-time professional when I took up the micro master's program. So uh, working during the weekdays was not an option. Monday to Friday, it was just morning to evening, uh, the same drill, go to the office, work and come back. So the time that I used to work or study the micro master's courses was only during the weekends. So I would start on Saturday mornings and at least, you know, try to be done by Sunday afternoon so that I have at least the Sunday evening free for me. Some of the courses were tough. I mean, uh, probably after SC2X and so on, it gets a little more uh, tricky. You need to spend some more time. So that time it would, you know, spill into Monday, but then you have to manage somehow, right? Because the courses are so interesting. They start with being completely math based where probably, you know, if you get the concept, you can quickly solve the question, but then later it becomes more into concepts and understanding, getting more into the qualitative uh, part of the supply chain. So it takes a bit more time. You want to get, um, get into depth and, you know, understand what you're studying and everything. So and also probably one of the other strategies I applied was to take uh, courses one at a time because it was definitely not feasible to take, you know, two or more at once. Some of them do, some of the learners do write to us saying they are taking two or more courses. That's the kudos to them because I definitely was not able to manage and I was like doing one at a time. And probably the grasping was also better if I did one at a time because 
the courses were demanding as well but then it was worth it and yeah that's how i was able to manage thank you sindhu i got another question that i think it's interesting i will jump in with some brief comments myself but i will then go to living with it so um we have uh, one of uh, our uh, members in the audience asking after 20 years of experience in supply chain will this give me something new i will say i had over 10 years not 20 when i started with the micromaster program but i have to say that it gave me a lot of technical skills and, I, and we also discussed this with living in the past um we did many things but we didn't have the frameworks or we probably didn't know what was behind the, the underlying um data in the technology we were using uh how things were done we knew we had some tools but probably didn't have this formal framework and i think that's what uh, the micromaster gave me and that gives you also a lot of strength to go to your meetings to Um, stand in front of uh, the people you have to convince about any supply chain decision because you have a well more structured um, presentation for your data. Um, I don't know, Olivia, if you want to add something else. Uh, no, I absolutely agree. I think I agree to everything you just said. Um, it's it's always great to, uh, even though some of the concepts that you 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 know you may already know, it's always going back to have a very structured way to understanding you know each of the concept and how they connect to each other. And I I also have to say one of the new concept that I really appreciate that I learned from the Michael Masters program is simulation, uh, using and and also system dynamic and you know understanding how each of the components are impacting each other. And then, uh, and how we can leverage different simulation tool uh, to to understand the different uh, elements and different variability of the factors can impact each other. So, so yes, I, I would say it's very interesting. Thank you, Living. Um, we have a question uh, from an undergrad student that is joining us. And he has taken our course and wants to know how to get into the industry. Which kind of tools do you think it's super important to have? Maybe not only basing the techniques um, special in supply chain technical skills, but maybe in your, their capabilities. What else do they need to develop to jump into the industry? Um, I would say uh, just like I think a general rule for learning development is 70, 20 and 10, right? So 70% learning through doing. Uh, so if possible, I would uh, recommend to look for internships or um, summer job opportunity within the industry that you're interested in and uh, start from there, get, get understanding of the, get better understanding of the industry and uh, from operations to, you know, various uh, functions that, uh, you know, through that uh, value chain and, and learn as much as you can. So I would say, uh, yeah, so that would be uh, one of the recommendation and then uh, have uh, 20% learning through others. So talk with uh, people who are in the industry uh, and then learn from them um, and w understand what, you know, what make them successful. And, and then what are the trajectory those, uh, ex those uh, people uh, went through. So I would say those are the next steps that I would recommend, uh, look for internship uh, or, uh, and, and then uh, talk with industry uh, practitioners. That's a great piece of advice. Thank you, Living. And there is something else that people is jumping in with many questions in the Q&A tab. And um, I think it's, a great part of our program. Um, we have some people saying, I am a very, I'm very experienced in the IT field or very experienced in finance as we talked before. Um, and there is also a question about networking. How does networking make supply chain professionals better? How does that help to improve in your career? So I think that this is one of the greatest things of our course. We have these people from all around the world uh, that are all interested in supply chain, some of them, have more experience in one or another field or a different industry. Some people is just beginning. We have undergraduates and we also have master program people, um, PhDs doing this. Um, how would you consider networking important for supply chain in your own experience? Uh, I think networking is very important, uh, not only for supply chain, I think for any job functions. Uh, relationship is 
uh, one of the foundations that helped you uh, broaden your uh, your uh, trajectory. So, um, and one of the uh, thing that I feel I'm lucky in my career that is that I have met a few great mentors. Um, so uh, that's really helped me uh, and guide me through my career trajectory. So finding a great mentor or finding several mentors uh, in, in your career, I think is one of the important steps and, and um, really connect to the, with them and uh, learn from them and get coaching for the development. And also uh, networking within the company that you're in, um, maybe different divisions or different business units, even different job functions. Um, so doesn't mean that supply chain have to network with supply chain pe person only. I would highly recommend uh, learn as much as you can from other functions, commercial, how they sell and why they, you know, how they make business proposals and why they make business proposal this way. And I think all those would help you when you develop your supply chain strategy, implement strategy, uh, initiatives and supply chain, you have a full understanding of why we're doing what we do. That's great, Living. Thank you. Um, I think we have, we have so many questions, we probably won't be able to address them all. So I think uh, we will stop it by now. Um, this brings us to the end of the live event. Um, we hope the conversation offers you some insights on optimization supply chain um, to meet stakeholder need. That was our uh, main goal. Um, so thank you, Living, for taking your time out of your busy schedule to join us. We truly appreciate. Thank you for answering so many questions and uh, for giving a great pieces of advice for all our learners. Um, we can tell you, uh, Cindy and I share the same perspective about networking, about communication. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, you will learn a lot of great information from our course and even language to speak with other people, even if you're not in the same field as us. So thank you, Living. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. We'll follow up on an email and see you in our courses as well. We'll be also sharing the links to the recording of this event, or you can find it in the YouTube channel. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.